What's up, fellow Xamarins? Which I believe is a term that would be used. <laughs> uh, so what's going on, guys? And welcome to the 53rd Xamarin Android tutorial. So this video is going to be concentrating on the frame layout, all right? And then the frame layout is something that is pretty cool and it's actually simple to use. It acts like a container, like the linear layout and the relative layout with less control in some ways, but more control with the Z indexing. So it allows us to overlay the widgets actually very easily, okay? Now, this is a G Plus app, as you probably know, and what I'm going to be showing you is how to overlay the toolbar. So if you look closely at this toolbar right now, it's fully transparent to show this picture. Now, if we scroll, it slowly fades in fully. So what's happening is the toolbar is actually overlaying this entire view and therefore it's allowed to be transparent, still fully functional. And then of course, as soon as you scroll, it starts to nicely fade in and then becomes fully transparent again. So here's the application that we're gonna be working on that does something similar. Notice that we have an image view right here and just a few, few bogus views just to make it scroll. And then we have our toolbar right now, which really is functional, just not too much with it though. And then notice that when you scroll, we get that nice fade in effect as well. And this is a, this is a toolbar that's acting like the action bar. So if you haven't really gone over the toolbar, I do have a few videos. So go ahead and click back into the last few videos that go over the toolbar and how to implement one. And that way, when you come over here, you'll be more familiar with it since we're just going to implement one pretty quickly, but mostly concentrate on how to do this with a frame layout. So there you have it guys. Now let's go ahead and get started. So here's the actual project, but we're going to start a brand new project here in Xamarin studio. And let's go ahead and call it toolbar overlay tutorial. All righty. So the first thing that we want to do now in this video is just kind of get more comfortable with the frame layout in general and just kind of start playing around with it and, and really just get, just get our hands dirty messing around with the frame layout and getting it, getting well acquainted with it if we if you guys are not yet. So this is going to be the focusing on the focus on this tutorial just kind of getting used to that. So let's go ahead and go into our layout and into our main AXML file. And we of course have the normal template that we usually will, will have. Now we have our button. Let's get rid of that. That way we just have a blank uh, screen right here. And let's go ahead and make this linear layout. We're going to make it a frame layout. So right now we have an empty frame layout, nothing to it. And let's go ahead and put, we're going to put an image view inside of it. And then when the image view is going to actually extend the width and the height of the frame layout. So let's go ahead and make that now. We'll do image view and then we'll just make a quick height. We'll also match parent and that is a typo. We'll make it a background color, like a light gray or a, maybe a darker white, depending on how you look at it. All right, so there's our image view. Now we do have to set the source on it. So let's go ahead and, and click over here in the, in the toolbar. There it is, gotta click on that little, the three dot icon, go into the framework, and let's just pick something random. We'll do, let's do menu gallery is the one I'm looking for. There it is. Ah, that was not good. <laughs> Okay, so menu, gallery, hit OK this time. And there we have it. So, okay, so now we have the, we have an image view that's, that's matching the width and the height of the whole parent. So it's filling the whole screen. Nothing really spectacular yet. 
So what if we want to add, like say, say a button, we're going to want to add a button to this frame layout and we're going to want to, we'll add it underneath the image view. And we'll do, we'll do a fixed width like of, actually we'll do wrap, wrap content for the width, but for the height, we'll do something fixed like 50 DP. And then the text, what we'll do is we'll say button, uh, button overlay. And then we'll do like a background color of maybe like a red. All right, guys. So there's our button. And notice that, notice immediately what you should notice is that the button is actually overlaying the image view. So a lot of times on the linear layout, if we actually specify the match parent on both things or on just one thing, the this would get pushed off and it would be off the screen. A relative layout, it may or may not be depending on, because you, know, you do have a lot of control, but, but it may or may not be depending on how you specify the position but the frame layout is nice for overlaying stuff. So the Z index of this say is zero, where the Z index of this is one. So since it's higher, it's actually gonna be on top of the image view. Now that is directly related to the fact that we declared the image view first. So it matters a lot how you declare in what order the widgets depending on, to, depending on which overlays what inside of the actual frame layout. So what I mean by that is actually, if I were to take this and move it below the button, then this will have a higher Z index and this will actually overlay the image view. So notice that what happened is that the button is now below. So then the image view is now overlaying the button. All right, so just to be more precise, if I said that wrong before, so the image view is overlaying the button and it's on top of the button. Therefore, the button is still there if we actually, if we actually, you know, run this, the button would still actually be there. If we go into the document outline, we can click on the button and see that it's still there. We're just not visible because it's actually the image view is on top of it. So that, so in other words, it, it matters very much how we declare in what order we declare it. Now, say if we were to make another button and we'll put it here just for fun. Now, if we were to make an exact button, we would see that even if we change the color, of course, to something like a green. Uh, yeah, that hurts. That's pretty bad on the eyes. So uh, let's do blue. It's a little easier on the eyes, right? All right, so we have a blue button and we also have another button that's actually uh, underneath it, which is the original button. But since it's actually the exact same position, we we are uh, we are overlaying the 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 first button. So what we can do is how do we change the position of stuff? Well, we don't have that much control how to change position, and that's why I don't recommend recommend actually putting so many widgets inside of this and acting having it act like as a as your main source of, of a parent container. You know, if you want to stack something, stay with the linear layout. But if you're actually looking to overlay something, then yes, the frame layout is a really good is a really good tool to use. So, but you do have some control to change that. And then mostly the control comes with the layout underscore gravity property. And here you can actually center, top center and do some cool stuff with it. So notice that now our button that we centered it inside of the parent. So now it is now centered. And similarly, we can do bottom. So it goes to the bottom. And then we can also do use the vertical bar to get more than one value. So we want to do bottom center. So we want to center it. And then say if we want to do bottom, bottom right to do the bottom right, of course, and say on this button, we want to do, we'll, we'll bring it over to the bottom left. So the way we can do that is bottom left. And then I'll move it over there. So notice that we we do have some control, and then of course you can actually add some more padding and some margin to get some to get some even more control. So that you can you can even start 
taking this and then do something of the sort. We'll do a bottom margin, 10 DP or something like that. And then I'll move it up a little bit and you can do a left margin. So you do have control over it, but like I said, you don't have as much control as a relative layout, say where you can really specify where you want things and underneath and center and parent aligning things. So you do have that control, but with, of course, the frame layout, you get that overlay and you can really do some cool stuff with it. And one of them, of course, is that toolbar that we had in the beginning of the video that was allowed to overlay. So all we had was a toolbar overlaying the rest of the views. And then therefore it's, it's the last, it was the last one declared because of the fact that we want it to be on the very top. And then we just mess with the alpha uh, when we actually scroll and change the change the transparency. So, but the layout gravity, of course, getting back to this is the way that you would actually change the positions of the widgets inside of the frame layout. So I hope this, this video gives you a good example of what a frame layout could be used for and why to use it and how to use it. So. You know, these, these are all important things and you can really do some cool stuff with it when you start, when you begin to have the power to overlay stuff. Now, this video is of course going to be just a concentration on the frame layout. So just get more comfortable with it. And the next video, which is going to be a direct continuation of this one, we'll actually go ahead and implement the toolbar. And then what we'll do is actually uh, implement the scrolling, which will actually fade in so that you can get that really cool effect that Google Plus uh, has. And, and you can really, you know, use that to benefit from being able to have your users show, have your users see the entire image or something like that, like how we had in the previous, the previous, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the beginning of this tutorial. That way, you know, when you use it, you can really be able to benefit the all of the screen space and the real estate of the screen because of the fact that it's always limited. All right, guys. So. Just remember that the layout gravity is a great way to control where things are in the frame layout. And then the order of it matters very much when you are working with the frame layout and it directly uh, and implicitly actually changes the, Z in the index of the widgets. All right, guys. So the next video, we will go ahead and we'll do the, the tool overlay and get that going and get that really nice, cool effect. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.